Ladies and gents, I welcome you to episode 4 of me and Drake playing 100 Days of Scorched Earth. This episode will be days 30 through 40, and we're gonna pick right back up where we left off with me and Drake running the chapel cave. Let's dive back in on making some new friends, taming some new dinos, and exploring the vast desert. Day 31, we found ourselves stressing over absolutely nothing because we were right at the end of the cave. But I can confidently say that this is one of the easier ones, so with the next few, we're definitely gonna have to step up our game. Before jumping to conclusions, I wanted to see if our Thylas could get out of this place in any way, but turns out they couldn't, so this sucks for me. Drake was lucky in this situation, but I ended up potting up my Thyla and running far enough to where it would teleport Drake, and I didn't realize that his Thyla would come with him. 2,000 meter run, baby. Oh. That's messed up. <laughs> How you doing, sire? We've got a long journey ahead of us, and unfortunately, my file is trapped in a cryopod until we can get a cryo fridge. But at the end of the day, we got an artifact, so can I really be upset? After a long and tiring journey, we finally arrived back at home in the evening, and Drake talked to me about sitting down and having a beer and enjoying our evening, but we know what happened the last time we drank beer. Bye-bye! Let's go, let's go, let's go. Oh boy, 1800 metal. For a cooking pot? Day 32, I brought Westside out to start farming some more metal because as you could see, me and Drake were thinking about making an industrial cooker. There's a bunch of metal up here. Let's go. We did some more talking though, and it didn't seem like the smart thing to do by crafting the cooking pot first because it's not a good use of our metal. Yo, why are my arms so ashy? Holy crap. Instead, we decided to make the industrial forge because that can get us more metal faster for the cooking pot later on. You know, I never what? noticed that my RG has a blue afro. I wish I could tell you guys that today was eventful, but it just wasn't. We did exactly what you're seeing on screen all day just to progress and get closer to the forge. 2,500 metal for the forge? You're out of your mind, bro. Yep. We're gonna need to do like one more big metal run a piece. We actually ended up splitting up so we could do this more efficiently. I farm for the cementing paste and other requirements while Drake gets metal. Okay, uh, we have enough cementing paste. Holy crap. Brother's thick though. Look at them cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> look at them. Look at them cheeks, bro. At this point, we already had all the metal we needed. We just had to wait for it to finish smelting. So I figured I would keep working on our base to expand it because we need more room for other equipment. Day 33, I was on my way home with a fat amount of cactus sap. So I don't think that clay is going to be an issue anytime soon. Oh my gosh, we're going to have so much adobe. The day mainly consisted of me finishing off our little industrial room off to the right of our house. All right, well, whenever that forge is ready, I can go in that big ass building because that's pretty much complete. Upon nightfall, Drake started messing around with dyes for the first time in his life, and he was excited that he was dyeing his armor orange. Under better lighting and circumstances, I will show you guys what he looks like eventually, but to be honest, he kind of looks like he belongs in jail. Day 34, I began recording and texted Drake, but he never responded. The deserts don't care if you fell asleep, they keep on turning. Ah, uh, yes, what a beautiful day. One of my main goals right now was getting this forge crafted because once we have that, we can make the cooker easily and maybe even the grinder by the end of this playthrough. But for the time being, I was just waiting on metal to smelt, so I figured I would get a couple of new friends. Damn it, finding kangaroos is harder than I thought. Hello! What's up, buddy? You're level 20. What a disappointment. You heard me correctly. For the rest of the day, I was searching far and wide for kangaroos because they're way better at getting around the map than RGs. No offense, buddy. Oh, hello. Another one. 40? What am I going to do with a level 40 kangaroo? I mean, it's better than our level 8. Let's just go ahead and do it. Trapping these guys requires four billboards and a bunch of patience, but this time it was actually easy. I gotta wait for him to stop moving one time. I'm not saying I'm a god or anything, but this was pretty flawless if you ask me. All right, you ain't getting out of that one, Chief Rooney. Let's go. Taming kangaroos is fairly simple. You just shoot a couple of trank arrows. They knock out quickly, and then you feed them rare mushrooms. No way, I just missed point blank. 
Yeah, I gotta sleep, you ugly mug. Day 35, the beautiful kangaroo came to life, and I named him Jack, because if you name him anything else, you suck. Since ASA is legendary, I could just pick these up and use it for the next kangaroo. It's crazy to me that Drake is sleeping and slacking off while I'm getting him a kangaroo. I'm such a nice person, yeah? Jack, let's see how fast you really are. The people talk, and I just need to know. Okay, it's cool, I guess. Okay, we're soaring. Damn. The kangaroo was definitely legendary. The fact that it could go this far with taking minimal fall damage means that this is one of the best traveling mounts on this map. Give me something good, baby. Give me something good. Okay, I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take it. Any more kangaroonies? <gasps> I see one. Level 40. Come on, man. Level 45? That's a maybe. Oh, we got another. Another brother. Hello. Hold on. Level 10. Okay. Level 20. I can't make these levels up, guys. It's going to be really tough to beat this game when the highest spawn we've ever found is probably 100. And to beat the Alpha Manticore, we're definitely going to need 150 Rexes. At least 140, maybe. By evening, I found a level 50, and I figured we would just take it since it's the best thing I found all day. All right, and we're out. Let's go. So my next plan of attack was to figure out a way for me and Drake to get the beloved Wyvern eggs, because there's a lot of different ways you can do it, but some are more efficient and safer than others. Procoptotron. <laughs> Come to puppy. I'm entry level 10, I'm entry level 15. Day 36, I decided that I might get me and Drake a Lymantria to get Wyvern eggs because they're quick and they're nimble. 113. Okay, wow. It's uh, it's gonna be about two more days until we get enough oil. After my morning oil run, I put together a Lymantria trap and started looking, but I haven't found anything other than the two that I saw this morning. Level 15, that's rough. I wasn't gonna settle for anything under level 100, so needless to say, this took a while. The sun is going down, I am dying from overheating, my kangaroo is low on health from jumping, and I still haven't found a moth! Wow, that's a shield, isn't it? How are Lymatrias more rare than Rex's? I had to stop looking and put a tent down because, you know, the third superheat within three days was about to take my life. Day 37, the superheat was over and the search continued for one of these stupid ass moths. Wait a minute, I see a moth, I see a moth. Finally, after like a day. 115! Okay, all right, let's see if I can do this. All right, let's build it, let's build it, let's build it. The way this works is after you bola it, you build foundations and a roof and some walls around the Lymantria so it gets trapped once it gets unbolded. I think I got it trapped, I think I got it trapped. Oh my gosh, he is trapped, let's go. All right, pal. I began knocking him out with the crossbow, but I noticed that it was doing a lot of damage, and I don't know how much health these things have, so I decided to build a boomerang and try that instead. But unfortunately, that was still doing 44 damage per hit, so I just have to hope for the best. No! I killed it! Unfortunately, I did way more damage than I was dealing torpor, so this is a situation where, with high-leveled moss, I'm probably gonna need trank darts and a long neck rifle. I see another Lymantria. What are the chances this is a high level? I got a 115 and I ruined everything. That's a level 15. You gotta be freaking kidding me, dude. Unfortunately, a sandstorm rolled in, so the Lymantria search has to go on hold while I do some home chores. Maybe if Drake got online, we'd be able to find a Lymantria because there would be two people looking instead of one. But here we are. Uh, let's just take a moment to say that very soon, everything is going to get 10 times harder, and it's going to be a grind all the way until the end of this game. So let's take a breath and relax one last time for a long time. In the evening, after gathering all of the materials, I figured it was time that we make a cryo fridge because not being able to throw out potted dinos is rough at this point. Doing this allows us to tame stuff that's far away without having to have it follow us all the way back home, when instead we could just pot it up and throw it out when we get back. I'm missing, oh my gosh. There ain't no way I forgot five metal. I thought it was 110. After grabbing the five metal that I forgot the first time, I headed to a new supply crate. Cryo fridge is mine! Ours, I mean, ha ha ha. 
Day 38, I got the fridge placed down, but now I realize why they're kind of bad. Prevented for five minutes? Well, that's just stupid. All right, well, I gotta wait five minutes for those douchebags. Okay, C4, we'll always take that. What do we got here, a Thyla saddle? Holy hell! Um, Iguanodon and AC. Wowzers, baby! So... Okay, hell yeah, dude. So when me and Drake first picked up Bob's Tales, these treasure maps weren't working, but now they were. So let's try this out. Treasure cache requires shovel. I want to see what this is all about. Where is my shovel that I had super early? There it is. As you heard, all you need is a shovel. You activate the map and then travel far as hell for hopefully some good resources. If these things are like the treasure maps in seven days to die, it will absolutely be worth it. What? No way! Oh my gosh! What the hell? The heat resist is 195 on those. What in the frontier blues is going on, man? All right, let's take a look and see if there's any more treasure maps. Because I definitely feel like there is. There is another one. We're gonna go ahead and put all of our artifacts in here too. As we go, you know, put our artifacts on these pedestals here. Look at it go. This treasure map is, oh my goodness, all the way across the map. Okay. Spoiler alert. Not all treasure caches are goaded like the first one. Another moth. Another moth. Lurking in the shadows. I want to die. I want to die. After spending about five minutes looking for this weird ass cache, I finally saw that it was behind some trees and right under the cliffside. I hope this doesn't glitch out into the wall. Oh, let's go. Let's go. This one was just resources? You kidding me? I just went halfway across the map for a bunch of tree sap and obsidian. What's crazy is now that I'm not looking, there's moths everywhere, but they're super low levels. There's a level 40 there, but it's still not worth it. That's not gonna help us do anything. And as you can see while being out, the fourth super heat within four days hit, and I'm honestly over it. Can I not overheat every single freaking place in this base? Even with all this heat resist, I'm still just sucking. Day 39, while the last bit of metal was smelting, I was looking for moths one last time. 100, I'll take it. I'll take it. I don't even care, man. Okay, we do this. Bada bing. Bada boom. Bada bang. My plan was to first trap it so it couldn't go anywhere and then make some trank darts for my new long neck. Please tell me you just stay stuck in there. Please, please, please. Yes, with a 300 plus damage long neck rifle, it's gonna do a lot more damage to the moth, but it'll also do a lot more torpor damage as well. We need narcotics. Unfortunately, this early in the game, trank darts are expensive, so I used most of the resources that we had as far as gunpowder goes to make them. That might need a lot more metal. All right, that's 20 tranks. Um, if that doesn't work, then I'll switch to the crossbow. 116, oh boy. That's not good. Four, five, six, seven. I had to play it safe, so counting to seven gets the full effects of each dart. No way, no way, we got it. Okay, I'm pretty sure like day 35 forward, I got a glitch where I had a never ending superheat. At this point, I'm learning to live around it, so it's not that big of a deal anymore. It's just annoying. We need a lot of metal, boys. While waiting on the Lymantria to wake up from its nap, I went out and gathered more metal, as you can see on screen. Because when our forge is crafted, I wanted to have something to eat right away. Baby, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. No more. No more. We have enough metal, finally. So now I just need to go farm the polymer and we will have it. We were in the final stretch. I just had to head to the open desert, kill some mantises for the polymer, and that forge is ours, baby. Speaking of, first thing on day 40, I found two mantises and I could finally see the light at the end of the tunnel. All of this hard work is about to pay off. All right, the time we've been waiting for. Hold on. The time we've been waiting for. I hope. Let's go! The forge is ours, baby! Unfortunately, where I wanted to place it was a little bit out of range from our original generator, so I had to invest in a second one. But nonetheless, we still got there. Now I can put this over here. Okay, and now I can turn it on. The forge! There it is, guys. And just like that, 
We are going to have all the metal in the world. Level 148, not two shabs, man, not two shabs. Actually, it was terrible. It was at this very moment that I decided this isn't gonna work. And it was all because of the moth's stats. I was super worried about bringing this thing into the wyvern trench, let alone the fact that he only had 300 stamina. Let's go. We're so fast. Not really. I could only fly for about 25 seconds before I had to land, which isn't gonna cut it. So it's time for plan B. And I know what you're thinking. It really does suck that I spent quite a few days trying to get one of these just to find out they're terrible. But you live and learn, my friends. You live and you learn. Blinded by the light. Well, my friends, it's been an eventful day, huh? I think I deserve a, a night at home, just chilling out. I wanted to grill some steaks for me and Drake so we could eat, have a nice dinner together, maybe a glass of wine, but he never got back to me. Well, until the next day. So I guess I'm just gonna have a meal by myself and figure out what the hell I wanna do with my life. But at least, at least I got my friends, my dinos. I can talk with them, I can pet them. I can feed them steak and wine. I'm actually going crazy. My friends, that's all I got for you today. Thank you so much for sticking with me until the end of this episode. It's been a fun one, and next time we're gonna hit it hard. Since this was a shorter episode, I have a little present for you guys at the end of the outro that I think you're gonna enjoy. But until next time, my friends, I love you all. That's a lightning, that's a lightning. Oh my gosh! Please don't attack again. I'm gonna die for sure. There's no way I make it out of this. There's no way. Help me, help me, help me, help me, help, 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 help.